Hey guys, what's up? I just want to, can you hear me, Danny? Yeah, I can, I can. Okay, cool. okay good, man. No, spring is might... spring here, so it's quite wonderful. Where are you? Uh, your favorite state of Delaware. <laughs> I love Delaware. Oh, thank you. What's up, Brian? What's going on, Diddy? It's, uh, I, have day, huh? I have a feeling you'll be playing today. Yep, I got a lot of uh, a lot of practice in. I'm ready for John. It's like my oh. number one. My number one goal is to 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 trump John in a uh, role play. Get a better microphone. Oh wait, I got to get my earbuds in. Oh, he tells me to get a better voice. I don't have his voice, right? So you don't want to trump me. Or you, that's oh, like reaching, reaching too high. That's yeah, that's way that's way over, John. Hey, Kevin, how's how's things out there in San Fran? Gael, hello. How you doing? I love your smile today. What's oh, better? I'm laughing as I'm working. <laughs> I find the conversation funny and entertaining. Real quick, do you guys mind putting in the chat where you are from? so that everybody can have your information. Even rename yourself. Do I have to rename myself, John? No, we kind of know where you're from, Denny. Okay. House of Grimes. So, see the other two, what's happening with the... Is that uh, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Adam looks ready. He is pacing around that room. I think he's going to be the first person to say he wants to role play today. Yeah, I got a little nice two hour call session this morning and uh, been watching all the old replays. So nice. So, is this your work in? Say again. Did you subscribe to our YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. Kevin, are you able to turn your camera on today? Um, I prefer if I did it, but usually I do. Okay. Maybe next week, for, for sure next week. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, if you're, it's early in, the, in San Fran. He's probably in his jammies. I'm up every morning at 3 a.m., so no, this is <laughs> mid-afternoon for me. But I've been working on um, working on a, fixing something. All right, Kevin. How are you guys doing? It's been awesome. Awesome. Kevin, we're alive, awesome. excited, and full of energy. Woohoo! My favorite <laughs> saying. I love that. Yeah, we hey, hear it every morning. Every morning. How do you pronounce your name again? Yael? Yael. Yael. I'm not even going to try. I want you to done. Call me whatever you want. However it comes out, it's great. I think that you really want to say alive, excited, and full of energy. I saw your facial expression, and I think you should have to do it first. I have a client who's moving. You guys are in Myrtle Beach, yeah? We're in Fort Myers and Naples. Naples. I don't know. He said Naples. I have to, I have to send him your way. Okay. Sounds good. So we are going to get started. Happy Thursday, everyone. Today is such an awesome day. Um, we have the, the Denny Grimes, the authority in real estate, um, bringing you the mastery level role play today. And his co-host is John McLeod. 
So I know Yael, is that right? Yael is super excited to be here. Adam's excited. We have people logging in. Where are you from? Put that in the chat. And then real quick, does everybody know how to log into YouTube? Just show me your hands, put them up in the air, wave them around like you just don't care. All right, go to YouTube real quick.com. Actually, go to the chat. Click on the YouTube.com. Do we delivers need to put real quick in there also? Or can we just do YouTube.com? Well, I think she's got the link in there, John. <laughs> no, he thinks oh, he's feeling funny. punchy. He's, he's trying to be funny. It just didn't come across like no, that. No, it's, it's, it's punchy. <laughs> it's not funny. It's punchy. When Sally agrees with me, she laughed as well. <laughs> So please log in real quick to YouTube. We are trying to get to 400 subscribers today and I wanna make Denny's day. If you guys wanna see me next Thursday, the goal today is 400, so log in. Also, if you want any objections or have any objection handlers or just wanna get a hold of Denny, I've also included the email in the chat as well. That's right. If you uh, subscribe to YouTube today, I'll put you into the free drawing for two tickets to Greece. Two tickets to Greece will be the drawing today. I love that movie. So I have it on uh, VHS. Sunny. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on YouTube. What do I do? Um, it should pull right up. Jenny delivers. Just push subscribe. There you go. Okay. I've already done that. Yeah, so let's get started. So thanks, Sonny, for that. Well, you can kind of watch that and let us know if we get up there. We've got over 100 videos there already posted. It's totally free. And I know Adam's been watching some, so I trust it's been helpful. So I'm glad you're there, Sonny. John, are you with me? Ready to get cracking? Let's roll. All right, you guys, as you know, if you don't know, we're doing mastery, <clears throat> mastery level role play. And you'll know if you get to the right YouTube channel. If you look behind me, that's what my YouTube channel looks like. That's what it looks like. Uh, so go there and just hit subscribe. We'd appreciate that. <clears throat> I always, or most of the time, like to start with a thought of the day. And here's my thought. Actually, I have two thoughts. My thought of the day. <clears throat> Number one, accept the streaks. I'm not talking about streaky windows, and I'm not talking about what we used to do in high school, uh, streaking across the, uh, the drive-in parking lot, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about the streaks that happen naturally in life. Athletes go through them, you go through hot streaks, you go through cold streaks. <clears throat> Case in point, had a conversation not long ago with somebody on my team that basically was in tears, working, 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 and not seeing a lot of you know contracts go through. I'm even seeing right now, because the listings are a little tighter in our market, I'm seeing our top agents working with more buyers. And again, a lot of competition out there. <clears throat> well, I had a conversation with her a little bit ago and in the last few days, she had three of her contracts accepted. Now, last week, she was up at the plate and swinging a miss and striking out. None of her buyers were winning. And so there, I teach a Keller Williams class called Bold, and there's a bold law that I want you guys to kind of, if you're a veteran in real estate, you'll know this. It goes, keep your emotions between the lines. And, and, and so if you're going through one of those if you're going through one of those sessions right now where you seem to be putting in more effort than you're getting results, just keep moving forward. If you're getting more results um, than you're putting in effort, you better keep moving forward because in both cases, it will change. Now, if you've been in real estate and experienced that, raise your hand or put it in the chat that basically it will happen that way. Even Tom Brady has bad games and you know Tiger Woods didn't win all the golf tournaments. So you guys... It's all about your attitude. You focus on the activities. And I can tell you there's two times in my real estate career that I got to the end of my rope. I mean, I mean, I've had bad days and been discouraged. I mean, I was ready to hang up my cleats, so to speak. Just keep moving forward because something is going to happen. It's just the law of the universe. If you keep putting the right activities out there, that basically is a seed. It will come back to you. Last comment on that. And you can add any comment you want to uh, any, any of you guys uh, is this. I don't know that we have total control. If you want to take three listings this month or have three sales or 30 sales this month, I'm not sure we have total control over that. There's only two things we have total control over you guys is what we think and what we do. 
we do have control over the activities. And if we control our activities over time, we'll have consistent outputs. That's my thought of the day. You can rank, rank it on a one to 10 on the side. And if you give me a poor mark, I will not add you to my trip to tickets to Greece. Okay, so if you like that or have experienced that before, that's awesome. Second thing I'm gonna say in my last point really quick, I talked about it last week. I talked about pay attention last week because of what's going on in Ukraine. Now that's, I mean, there's a very short attention span with news cycle. I know it's still out there. There's something else going on that might be a, a plus and a minus for us. If you're paying attention, does anyone want to take a wild guess what I'm talking about now? Interest rates. Ready to go, Archie. It is interest rates. Now, how? Now, I know we've seen interest rates bounce around a little bit. However, you're, I believe now they went uh, uh, over four, down a little bit. Now they're going to go back up. Anyway, there's going to be more talk about uh, the affordability of homes and the interest rates moving forward. How might you, you understand that and, and use it to you, their advantage, not necessarily your advantage, because it's all about the customer, right? It may create a sense of urgency. And I know they haven't taken a big hike in a long time. And I know people are a little bit sleepy about interest rates. However, in your conversation, because it's in the news, leverage that a little bit. From a buyer standpoint, as interest rates go up, you know, as purchasing power goes down. How would you use it with a seller? Any wild guesses? You just went from having five qualified buyers to three. Bingo. Exactly. So again, these are conversations I want you to be aware of. Don't get numb by all the stuff that you're, all the business you're into, that you might have a little bit more pointed conversations to help buyers and sellers get off the proverbial fence. Any comments on that, John, before we move forward? She did a lot more succinctly than I would have. You know me, I would have just gotten the numbers and lost a few people. So that's uh, that's a great way of putting it. You just went from five buyers to three. Yes, there you go. All right, well, you guys know, let's get into some action. I don't know if anybody's put any requests in there yet. I want to drill down a little bit on something that we talked about some last week and our team is uh, experiencing it. And as you know, during our role play here, you may be very proficient and you may have a different style. I totally respect that, honor that. There's right-handed golfers and left-handed golfers. There's some can play golf both ways and some can't play at all. So uh, we use the question-based listening enhanced conversations here. So the more questions you ask, the better. So I'm going to, and here is the model, by the way, acknowledge, isolate, address, and close. So let's talk a little bit about buyers. Buyers right now are frustrated. So I'm, I'm going to, I need a buyer's agent, somebody to raise their hand and that's experiencing working with buyers that are having a difficult time getting their contract accepted. So anyone want to take it blindly on and use, and you can use your style if you want, and then we can uh, have uh, somebody demonstrate the question base and see which one you like best. Do we have any agents? Raise their hand, rare, rare to go. I know there's some agents were on this call like 30 minutes before it started. Adam's all over it. Adam, you ready to go? Ready to go. Adam, all right. So Adam's from Delaware and you put your contact information when we're done there, a phone number. If anyone has a referral, maybe they can send it up your way. So, so here's the scenario. I am a buyer. We have been working together. We've made 10 offers and we've been unsuccessful. I am the buyer, you are my agent. And so a, a new listings come on the market. And um, hey, look, Adam, there's a new listing. I just saw it pop up. Let's go take a look at it. It's, it's, it's you know, we haven't, as you know, I'm qualified for 450 and it's right now at four, it's right at 465. I think I might be able to squeeze into that. So where would you so, take uh, it? You know, Danny, we, we've, uh, <clears throat> we've taken a look at uh, more than a few homes uh, right around your price point. And uh, um, I mean, you tell me, it, it, it seems that uh, the market has been kind of pushing us out of that price point. W would you agree with that? Well, I haven't, I don't know if it's the market or the agent I'm working with. However, we're not being successful and we're getting a little frustrated. All right. Well, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you know, me and my diligence. So when, when we do 
make an offer, I, I uh, you know, whether we get it or not, I, I take the time to reach out to the uh, listing agent. So um, based on the feedback I've given you about the offers we've written, um, do you think uh, looking at that price point is really going to get us into a new home this year? Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, again, I don't set the price. Um, uh, the market does. And, uh, you know, everything that we've taken the time out to go look at, um, you know, right around the 450 mark, uh, the market has uh, delivered a higher price than that, right? So we know people, we, we know, and we talked about this when we started that uh, the list price is kind of the jump off point. And uh, what the market's delivering is, is typically, uh, you know, with a good condition home, the type of home you want over that market price. So I guess the question is, should we keep chasing these uh, properties that we're not having any luck on? Or should we kind of sit back and pivot and reassess a, a strategy for how we, we're going to go about getting into a home? All right. No, so uh, awesome job. So I mean, I'll stop it right there. We're going to keep these to a couple of minutes. You brought me to that point. I thought that was an awesome question. Um, so you guys... Any any comments on that? And John, you can you can wrap up the comments on on where he went with that and, and that little vignette. I know I didn't give him all the time necessary, but let's talk about what he what he did so far. He asked he asked questions. I think he could have gotten the questions a little bit sooner instead of trying to explain the reason for the questions. Um, Adam, one question I've got for you is why is Denny moving? Why yeah, buying? yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't really uh, find an objection and isolate and acknowledge. I, I wasn't sure. I just was going back. I, I, okay, so he's coming at me, and this is what we're dealing with, right? And I should say, well, why are you moving, right? So sense of urgency. Ask yeah, the question I mean, to create it, the don't, sense of don't urgency. We all, don't we all find that as agents as, as we get caught up? As we know what the answer is. We just want them to plug into our brain, understand the answer, and move forward. We didn't, we, you know, it's my lame movie re reference to Keanu Reeves in the Matrix here. So what we need to do is deep breath and find out the reasons because he's going to give you a pain point and we all know that that pain point is not the real reason. The pain point that he has right now is only what's in front of him. There's a greater pain somewhere that's going to help him make the right decision. So we need to be able to get to that. There's also an issue if his price point is 450 and he's looking at a house for 465. Um, how do you like? Are we resetting the expectations? What are what's our goal here? Yes, fair enough. And in, in all in all fairness to you, Adam, I never really presented you with an objection, so th that model technically didn't apply. I presented you with okay, so, so we're going to go out. We lost ten houses, and now we're going to go on the eleventh. You you did a good job of taking me by the rein, saying, "Hey, wait!" And I don't know where I didn't let you finish. And 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 obviously, if we've been working on ten homes, the motivation you would have known my motivation. So where we're going with this is the uh, IL is the ready, willing, and able conversation we've had before last week. That you know, people said, "Well, there's that motivation." Well, motivation is probably in that ready, willing, and able. So I've got it up here. However, the, the one thing, though, that I want, um, I want us to talk about is, and we can go into another scenario, somebody else get ready to raise your hand if you want to be an agent, is in this same scenario, I've lost 10 houses. At some point in time, you're going to have to get in, and you may not be able to see that, you're going to have to get into the realistic. So if, are you working with buyers right now if they're unsuccessful? I can also tell you something else. They're unrealistic. If they're unreal, if they're unsuccessful over and over again, it's kind of like me wanting a date with Jennifer Aniston. Probably unrealistic at this stage. Maybe last year I had a chance. Uh, I don't know. So, so who oh, has? So short, Dunning. Uh, well, okay. I should I should not have my that negative programming. Anyway, <clears throat> so I think I think we should. And there's uh, uh, Jesse. You put in. We're going to get to the seller objection. We'll get to that one. Yeah, I will really love that because we cover it every week on, on the seller objection. So let's just stay with keeping buyers, working with buyers and getting, getting them into the realistic lane. Who's got their hand up that wants to handle this? Yael? Yeah. All right, you're the agent. 
All right, there's this house that came on the market. We got we got three minutes. So Sunny, you can time this. We got a house that came on the market. Uh, it's four eighty five. You're in New Jersey, so it's six eighty five, and you know I'm qualified for six eight. I'm six fifty, and so uh, let's go take a look, and maybe we'll make a swing on this one. <clears throat> All right. So before we go ahead, because I, I think that's an awesome idea. I want you to see the house, but before we go ahead. I'd like to just make a quick call to the mortgage broker just to make sure that you qualify for this home because interest rates have adjusted and I want to make sure that we're not wasting our time. How does that sound? Well, can you call on the way over because you know things are selling fast. I want to get my I want to get my offer in. All right. Um I I know we went and we looked at 10 houses together. No, no. Um, we, we've had 10 okay. offers. 10 offers. We put in 10 offers. Yes. And we didn't get them accepted. So what do you think we need to do to win this specific bid? That The house that you love and you, you want to go look at, what do you think we need to do to win that bid? Well, I just think, and it's a very competitive market, I think it's sooner or later, if they say blind squirrels find peanuts. So I, uh, I think my day's coming. I mean, maybe it's number 11, maybe it's 29. We're going to get one. I just know it. I have I faith know. in you. We will, 100%. I just want to know, like, what kind of offer do you think will get accepted? What kind of offer do you think that this property um, will get to get the winning, to, to win the house? Well, I'm qualified for uh, 650 at 685. And I think it probably, I, I might be able to add about uh, maybe, um, I may be able to go to 670. All right. So the, based on how we've done things in the past, and we, we saw the trends of the properties that have sold, um, do you realistically think that we can get that this house that you can get this house for 670? Well, my friends, uh, golf, golf partners, boyfriends, Dennis, uh, um, uh, psychologists told me that they heard that they got a house, you know, they just, they just had to take time. So we're wasting, we're burning daylight here. Y'all let's go look at this house. I love you dearly. And I think you're an awesome buyer. The, the problem is I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. So I don't, I don't see, think there's a point to going for houses that are higher. I think we need to pivot and really relook at, you know, what, what you'll be able to win. Because if we're coming in at 670, we're just, we're just wasting our time. So I may, I may not be the right agent for you. Um, but let me know what you think. All right. There's about 25. Three, yeah. I figured that was about right where it was. So, all right. So that's one way she's breaking up with me. Breaking up is hard to do. So that's the takeaway. I really like that. Yes. That's very powerful. So any comments from anyone, we can do this again, because this is a conversation. You're going to have to have a serious conversation. Now, one way you can do it and again, if you stay on point with going back with John said a little bit ago, talking about Adam, Adam's role play is the more questions you can ask me to make me um, think about it. Now, Yael was asking questions. How can you get me into the feeling like, you know what, there, there's a couple of pointed questions you could ask that would get to the heart of the matter very quickly. Anyone want to take a, anyone want to take a stab at what one of those questions would be? What's Go, it ahead, do? Go ahead, Arch. My, uh, my question would be, what's it going to do for you and your family if you don't win this home by an X amount of time? What's that going to do for your family if you don't win? All right. That, that is making me think. That's a good question because I can't answer that yes or no. That's an open-ended question that makes me think. That's a good question. Who's got another question? Um, I have a question. Um, how much time do you, do you believe we're going to lose um, if we waste it looking at this house when we should be looking at a house that we qualify for? Okay. That's a good one. It's making me be introspective and process that. One more. I'm not saying there's a right question. These are all good. I'm gonna, go ahead. How about, are you trying to buy a house or save money from buying a house? All right, are, am I trying to buy a house or save money buying a house? I'll save money from buying a house. What's the point, are you trying to, are you trying to save a lot of money 
Are you buying the house or are you trying to buy the house? Does that make sense? No. You're basically saying, are you, do you want a good deal? I don't want work with clients who want a good deal. Okay. Well, that's another one. So, uh, well, all right, let's, let's change the scenario. Yeah. I was into breaking up with people today. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's change the scenario. Make it, it's at 650 and I'm qualified for 650. It's, it's at 650 and I'm qualified for 660. I don't know if that's such a thing. So I'm going to, that's been, I've been going over asking price of all these houses. What's, what is, how can you get me into reality? What we want to say, how, how can you find out if I'm realistic or not? Give, what me if, some, go, give me some pointed questions. What if you ask them, are you willing to look at homes that are, oh, I'm just, okay. Um, are you, are you willing to look at the homes that are three bedrooms instead of four bedrooms? Because those are priced at 600. Well, why would I buy a house at, uh, uh, look at a house at 600 when I'm qualified for 650? Well, at, oh, there, there. <laughs> All right. So, it, yeah, teach us, Je Denny. Brian, you want to step in here? I need, you're pounding your forehead against the wall. I mean, I, I would just, you know, Denny, how many, how many offers have we had rejected in the past? Now, see, he's, he's got it pretty good. He's taking me into the past. Well, duh, 10. 10. And how many offers are you going to keep keep submitting and getting rejected? Well, I was, maybe this might be the one. Might be the one. And how many buyers out there do you think are going to outcompete you in, in this house that's over your uh, pre-approval amount? I mean, I have no, I'm, I'm giving it my best shot, Brian. I'm, I'm going over asking price. I'm qualified for six, six, six fifty. I'm going at six sixty, six seventy five. I'm, I'm, I'm selling my baseball card collection to make this happen. What else can I do? I understand it. there's not many options in this market right now, but our, our options that we can look at is being a little more realistic in the market. And if we could find something within a price point where you don't have to be rejected, you know, is that something that's going to be a little more realistic for you and where you're not going almost bankrupt to buy a house? Okay, well, what would that look like? Within your, under, oh, God. <laughs> not, over, not over your pre-approval amount, Denny. You got to yell at people sometimes. All right, well. Hey, Denny, let me, let me throw something in here. There was a, a question that Bryant could have asked and I think he missed an opportunity here when he was quizzing you on the number of offers you made. And that is, you know, Denny, you've made 10 offers. How many of those were over ask? All of them. Hmm. Well, actually, no, the first one we, you know, my dad said to offer 20% less and that didn't go anywhere, so. Okay, so, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll get rid of, we'll play the bell curve, we'll get that one out of here. So <clears throat> your offers have all been over ask, so. What makes you think that it's going to be any different now? Okay, so I like where he's going. Uh, uh, well, you know how many times I'd ask my, my current wife out and how many girls said no before I finally got a yes? Careful, she's more listening. than 10. Careful, she's listening. Oh, uh, she's there. <laughs> Hello, Kristen. So, Denny, the... the the ask price in a market today is more like the starting price. Yep. It really doesn't matter. It's just a seller saying, hey, I'm interested in selling my home. Look at me. And then what happens? What somebody, have you experienced? Somebody get me. So, all right. So y'all are driving. Y'all are eventually getting there. Get me to the heart of it now. Do you, do you want to buy a house? Yes. Are you committed to this? Yes. What do you think it's going to take you to get there? I don't know. I'm going over asking price on everything I'm looking at. And you're not being successful. So what do you think it's going to take to be successful? At this point, a different agent. You may need to sell your kidney, Denny. <laughs> Kristen, answer the question. Hey, Denny, do you want to sell your kidney for this? How serious are you? I'm sorry? Do you want to sell your kidney for this? Kidney? Oh, I only have uh -huh. a good one. I only get, I'll sell my bad one. <laughs> Yeah. Danny, what if we took a different price point where you would be the king of overpricing it 
versus being already near the top end of where you want to purchase a home? I feel like if you ever watch Christmas Vacation and Chevy Chase is taking his family through the snow to look for the perfect Christmas tree, all of a sudden they see it and the heavens open up and there's this hallelujah. That's the question I'm waiting for. You've got to get the buyer on a different thought pattern. Now, you guys are eating all around the cookie. What about what if we can find you a perfect home that you actually get the offer accepted? Yeah, don't I don't like perfect, perfect homes. So I'm going to stay over there with Terry. Terry? <laughs> Terry? Keep going. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to use an analogy. My son could compete at a higher level in gymnastics, but he wouldn't necessarily medal. Or he could stay at a level where he knew he'd be first place. So I'm asking you the same in this home scenario. Would you like to pick a price range where you probably won't get the home? Or would you like to pick a price range where you know you're going to be at the top? I hope you're taking some notes because she's getting into my, my heart's pitter pattern because now she's using analogies, which I love analogies. Uh, okay, now you're making me think, well, I'm going in, I'm going in over asking price based on my qualifications. What should I do different? What do you think you should do differently? Well, if I had that answer, I probably would do it. That's a great question. However, sometimes, sometimes you're going to help, help us. You're going to have to tell us something. What do I have to do different? I would go, I would go with the same things that you want in a home, but let's pick a different price range or a different neighborhood with a different price range. And then we can find you that dream home with all the bedrooms you want. And you can go in over asking and beat out the person that's only qualified at that asking price. All right. So that is, that is the central part where I wanted you to get to. If you're working with buyers that are consistently unsuccessful, and I, I might've asked this question last week, and I think it's worth noting that if you take out somebody with no money, no credit uh, on their way to jail and uh, have tax liens and they can't afford to buy a house, basically, and you show them property, that would be a total fat waste of time. If you're taking somebody out who's unrealistic, that is the same. In this market, and again, just going back and being hypercritical on what Terry was saying, she was giving, uh, painting a picture of this dream home in a different price range. What's the probability if I'm looking at a higher price range and, and she's now say, look, to be realistic, to compete in gymnastics and metal, to use her analogy, I'm going to have to sacrifice being at Boardwalk and Park Place, or I'm going to have to sacrifice the walkout basement, what's the possibility I won't be a little bit dis disappointed and it will not be my dream house? Probably pretty strong. So the question, if I put a bow on this and we'll get into a seller conversation, is this. So John, coming to you, so let me ask you, do you want to continue to put in offers or do you want to, or do you want to own a home? Notice I didn't say buy. Want to own. All right, so would you would you admit at least the way we've been going at it, you've been gi giving it your best? Yes. And we're unsuccessful, right? right? Yeah. yeah. That's like basically, and I love analogies, and I use this in my team, I think, in, in, in a meeting. Um, does anybody know how high a basketball rim is? I mean, an NBA. 10 feet. 10 feet. Is there anybody here on the call that can dunk a basketball without assistance? Well, Let's just assume there might be, um, or even touch the rim. And so in, in essence, an unrealistic buyer is like someone attempting to grab the rim and doing it more and more and more. And they're only like five, seven. They're, it's never going to happen. You've got to have the conversation. It's malpractice to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome. And I've had agents defend themselves and say the buyers are doing their very best. Yes, they are. They're jumping up and not even hitting the net. So are you going to let them do that? Or are you going to tell them the truth? And the truth is take their qualification point and you have to back them down into a lower price range. The analogy that Terry used was awesome. You know, you're, you're going to have to compete in an, another, I don't know how you do it in gymnastics. However, you're going to, you're going to have to go, if you're qualified at 650, we're going to have to look at homes and in the 550 to 575 range. Now we can be aggressive over asking price and still be within your qualifications. Don't get all com com um, um, co complicated with, oh, what about the appraisal? I, I'm just talking about basically the conversation. 
My question to you, and you can put it in the chat, if you're working with buyers like that, you, you owe it to them to have to give them some chance of success. Because over each period of time, with prices going up, maybe double digits a quarter, you're not being you're not being a good agent, a good fiduciary if you don't have that conversation. And Denny, on those, uh, I'm glad you used agent and fiduciary uh, on your last sentence there. I would encourage anyone who has questions about waiving inspection contingencies, especially inspection contingencies, to talk to your broker rules vary from state to state. Uh, I can tell you that our broker here in Naples will not sign off on a contract with a zero day inspection or a waiver of inspection contingencies without the buyer signing a waiver holding harmless the agent, the broker and our office. So be very, very careful about going in with absolutely zero inspection contingency. So check with your broker on that one. Ah, thank you, John. So is there any comment, anybody want to have any backfill on that or any, any side conversations or any drill down any deeper on the buyer side and the realistic buyer? What do you think it is that's usually stopping people from, like when you were doing, what's stopping them from accepting reality? Like they don't want a smaller house. They don't want to not have a walkout basement. And if they would accept that they can't have that, yeah, they'll find a house. But how do you, I guess, maneuver that piece? Transition that to the... What'd you say, Adam? Yeah, how do you transition that, right? Um, how do you tell somebody you know, that a lot of it... have to adjust their expectations on what type of home they can... I mean, it, it's the townhome conversation in our market, but anyway... It's not a difficult conversation. I, I got, you know, I kind of went through it real quick. We're not successful, are we, Adam? We're not successful, Jenny. Well, do we put my best foot forward, like you said. All right. So basically, we're going to have to change our, our plan. Are you willing to adjust your plan to be successful? Yes. Yeah, I really want to get in the home. And so without having to repeat that conversation so we can get into a seller objection, here's the point that, you know, you, you, you ask, well, how do we get them in reality? My question is, how do we get, how do I get you in reality? Because if you go out there and keep showing homes that they can't buy, it's you that's unrealistic. I'm doing that right now with a client. And I, I guess. Just, it, yeah. And I just think, oh, you know, they're such special people. It's going to work out. Nice. Yeah. Put that in a video to the seller who's got an offer $50,000 greater. Let's see if that works. All right. So any other yeah. comments on that? This is I a think a lot of it is just setting the expectation, right? At the very beginning, when you're first meeting with them, just saying, this is how the market is, and this is what to expect. Just kind of creating that reality, like realistic, short of what to expect from the very beginning. That is the essence of what we do, is, is set up the right expectation. And I have mm -hmm. a saying out there, you'll get this later on today when you're, when, when you're at the supper table, right? If you've got somebody that's unrealistic, buyer or seller, it's easy, easier to change who you're working with than it is to change who you're working with. So if they're unrealistic, you're not going to change them. I mean, after you have a conversation, if they continue to want to go down the same path, you might as well, in your brain, I want you to think about, okay, I'm going to go get out every unqualified buyer. I'm going to show them property because it's the same thing. Stop it. All right. Any other comments? Because we're going to get into a seller objection. It's my favorite one. Who's ready to go? Raise your digital hand. Let's we'll see who comes up. You're a listing agent or and you're on a listing appointment. And this is the number one objection in the world right now. Top seller objection. If I sell, I'm afraid I won't have anywhere to go. Who's handling that? Any hands, John? Uh, here we go. Oh, Adam stepping back up again. All right, just a second, Adam. If no one else steps back up, let's see. We got a lot of. You, you, don't be afraid. I'll put out a shout out so that nobody is shy. We want you all to step up and be part of the conversation. So come yeah. out of the woodwork. All right, perfect. Yeah, you're up. No, no, oh, not me. No, no, not me. I'll, no, I'll give it a shot. I'll get after. So, uh, all right, who said that? Who's going to give it a shot? Yeah, who? My ladies. All right, you're up, my deli. Okay, I'm afraid if I sell, I'll have nowhere to go. Now, now that is an objection. 
So now we're going to go into the model. Acknowledge, isolate, address, and close. So acknowledge it. So I hear what you're saying. If you're where to sell your house, you have nowhere to go. Are you thinking you don't have anywhere to go? Actually, the the the, the least you say on the acknowledgement, the better. You said, okay. I forget what you said. I see, I understand, I get it. Don't, I hear what don't, you're saying. Don't dig a hole. I get it. Everyone feels that way. I feel the same way too. Now you got a big hole. So you say, I understand. Okay, I got understand, it. I yeah. understand, Danny. Now isolate. So other than not knowing where you're going to go, is there anything else that would keep you from selling your house right now? Uh, and I'll just keep it, keep it simple. No, that's, my, that's our major concern. Okay. Now answer or address. Doing great. I know. I'm in my head now. Um, Adam, get ready. You want to tag out? No, not yet. Just, just <laughs> pretend you're talking to a friend. How, you, you're sitting down for a, a beer or a glass of wine or whatever it is, and you're having this conversation with a friend. Where would it go? Let's talk idealistically here. If you could go anywhere, if you could sell this house, put it on the market, get a big check for it tomorrow, where would you go? What would that look like? Well, we're look, we're looking at uh, we're looking up in the Cave Creek area. We want to be you know we want to get out of the city. We've already you know established that's where we want to be. We've been shopping online. We see some houses that we like, and and we can you know if we sold this one, we would love to go up there. Okay. So what about, what is it about not, what is it about fearing not finding a house is really concerning you? Well, if we were to sell our house and not, and what if we sold our house? And I understand selling a house, what happens, right? Pretty fast, a couple of days, a couple of hours. Sure. And this market, yes. Oh my gosh. They're just, now you got me scared. Um, you um and then what if their house in cave creek isn't available now what now you've just asked me to jump out of a parachute hoping i run i mean out of a plane hoping i run into a parachute on the way down so i understand what you're saying actually i don't understand what you're saying um help me get an idea of what it is that you, that, that your concern is about because is it danny that your fear you're not going to find a place because of how much it's going to cost you because of the way that the, the, the house prices are right now? Or is it that you might be having to leave your house because it's going to sell within two weeks and now you have no place to go because you haven't found that house yet? Which one is it? The second. Okay. That's actually part of the negotiation process. Tell me more. So... When you put your house on the market, typically, depending on where you are, I'm in Houston, Texas. So here you typically has about, from the moment that the offer is accepted, you have about 30 to 40 days before you have to leave your house, right? right. So say you have a buyer who wants to, ready to move it in two weeks, right? So now you have two weeks, it's a cash offer, everything clears, you have two weeks to leave your house. Before you accept that offer, that could be a, uh, negotiated into the contract. What would I so negotiate? So it buys you, what's that? Yeah. What would I negotiate? Time, two extra weeks for you for you to, to stay there. You could rent it back or you could extend the closing date. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So when I go and make the offer on the house that I want in Cave Creek and I haven't sold my house, I'll have to have a contingency, right? Correct. And I, I've read that those aren't going through because there'll be a cash offer that will trump me. Yes, but here's what I want you to understand. Cash is not always king, okay? Is a contingency-free offer always king? In this market, yes, that is correct. So do you see you kind of drove into an alley, didn't you? Yes, I did. 
No problem. However, no problem. This is why we do this. Is this a worthwhile objection to spend time on? And I, I really believe it should be every week. Yes, because I'm actually having that problem right now. Um, and, and on top of that is the neighborhood that I'm farming. It's a very unique neighborhood when no one, once you have a house there, unless you have a major event in your, in your life that's causing you to leave, you don't want to leave. I got it. So, Adam, do you want to give it a quick shot? Three minutes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to start from the top. You know what the objection is. Now what? So you say you've been looking in Mill, Mill Creek, honey? It's cave. It doesn't really matter. It's Cave Creek, actually. It's a little neighborhood. My wife and I have a home in um, Arizona, but it can be Mill Creek. <laughs> cave Creek, Denny. Um, so let me ask you, have, have you, uh, you know, while you've been kind of just keeping an eye on it, have you seen any properties that came up that might have been of interest to you that you could yeah, see? I, I, I was, I, I mentioned that earlier in the role play. Yeah, we've been looking online. We've seen some houses, but, you know, they're, they're selling and I can't, I can't. I mean, they're sold. You know, I haven't sold my house yet. Okay, but you know, just just you know, thinking forward. I mean, you you are seeing properties come up now. How often are these properties showing up that might be of interest? Now, now take note of what he's doing here. He, what he's doing, he is he is beginning to set the time frame, and it's very important that the potential seller set the time frame, and you don't. And I'm talking about the set, the time frame of how much time he's going to need because whatever you say is not maybe what he has. And again, I brought a slide. Remember, every conversation we have with a buyer or seller is a puzzle. They know what they're looking at, right or wrong. We don't. And the only way we discover by asking questions. So that was a very important question in however you want to play it. All right. So all we see him coming up, you know, you know, maybe once every couple of weeks once a month we'll, we'll see one come up yeah I, I can see how that would be just concerning Denny um so well, every wait, once wait, a month wait a minute, wait yeah, a I don't know why I said that <laughs> good don't now again does any, anyone pick up what he just did there he put words yeah, in your mouth yeah. isolated again yeah put words in his mouth well I thought it was isolating again sorry it, it, you just made the conversation negative when it wasn't yeah, negative it yeah, it is. That was that was a neutral statement, and then you said, "No, oh, I can see how that could be disconcerting." But oh, it made me feel bad. It's not disconcerting at all. It is what it is. So be careful. Just if we have to think about it. I'm not being hard on you. I'm just saying. Just that was that. no, no. It's a great point, Danny. I mean, I know where to go with this, but I guess inside, I, I am a little disconcerted. <laughs> um, so you know, you know, I said this uh, yesterday. I think on our team role play that. Uh, that, you know what, our emotions are not important either way. Like a doctor treating a patient, I mean, they've got to be empathetic, not sympathetic. So I get it. There's going to be some times where our emotions are going to be at right angles to what we're talking about. However, it's about me, not about you. I'm the client. So one, one more question. Go ahead and let's see if we can get this and we'll... Um, All right, there so is a you are seeing some homes of interest. Uh, let me ask you the question. Um, if you were able to, and I'm just saying if, if you were able to sell your home and cash out this large amount of equity, which would put you in a great position to win, could you see see the right home coming up that you could make a winning offer on? I, I, we're seeing them about once a month. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's, let's, uh, yep, you got me with that one. It's a lot of time. Denny, they're so close. I mean, all right, who's ready? Let me think, make me think. Uh, there is okay. a model. Hang on, there, hang on just a second. There is a model to follow on this, right? You, you're, you, you haven't gone to step one yet. Step one is to determine if I'm a buyer or seller. So who, who's ready to go? I'll give it all a right. shot. Is that Francie? Prince Ellie, yeah. Prince Ellie. All right, Franceli, let's go. So don't don't repeat anything to start. How do you how do you determine if I'm a buyer or a seller? So oh. you were you mentioned that in order, do you have to completely sell your property first in order to buy this new property in Cave Creek? 
Now that's write that question down. However, don't write it down the way she said it. Now she asked a question. I don't know how to answer. I don't know how to uncompletely sell it. Okay. So how about this? Um, let's do this. I will send your information over to one of our preferred lenders because Whoa. you might. Well, hang on. Um, hang on. Let's go back to your question first. Okay. The, the, lender, you... the lender does not matter at this point. Okay. Ask, find out if I'm a buyer or seller. Get to the point. <clears throat> Danny, do you have to sell? Do you need the proceeds from the sale of your home in order to buy your next property at Cape Creek? That's step one, you guys. That's step one. Because many agents think I'm a buyer and a seller. If I say no, I mean, if I say yes, I have to sell, I am not a buyer. I am a seller and a wanter. So you got to deal with reality first. Now, if I am, if I say, no, I don't have to sell first, that's a completely fish of another color. So let's just say that I have to sell in order to buy. Okay, so I understand that you have to sell in order to buy your new home in Cave Creek. What I, what has worked with some of my other seller clients is we put your property up on the market you know it's a hot seller's market. It's going to sell in a few days, correct? And another thing that has also been proved to work is that we have been asking for a 30-day lease back on your property. This is going to give you enough time. You're not liking that, huh? Well, <laughs> this, is this is, I'm glad you're going down that road. This is going, can anyone see any problems or challenges with what she's doing? There's two things that I I'm picking up on. So one of the things she's doing, Denny, is she is pigeonholing time frames. And, and I instance. said, don't. That's what I said when, when I was talking to Adam. Do <clears> not <throat> set the time frame. Yep. You don't have any guarantee that the, that the right property is going to come on the market within 30 days for them to buy. That's right. You're still so, asking me to jump out of a plane without a parachute. Secondly... You're explaining yourself as opposed to painting them in a corner with questions. That's it. Those are the two things. So, so Denny, what's the question that you would ask? Well, all right. So this is, let, let me land the plane here. Then we can, we can then backfill it. Okay. So, uh, uh Fred Sally, right. Mm -hmm. You're now, you're now the seller in my, my situation. Okay. So step one, find out if they're buyer or seller. Step two, find out. Okay. And this is what Adam did expertly. Um, and I even offered it because I wanted to save time. Find out what they're looking at and what they're looking at are they, and how often are they seeing the home? So for example, you have, you're looking at Cave Creek, or you're seeing a house you said about every month, that, that, but you can't buy it? Right, once every other week, it's, some of them are coming up on the market. But they're just, I mean, they're selling within a day or two. That's my concern. I got it. Well, okay. And are those homes that you're happy with or, and they're, you're, they're in your price range? And if, if you had the equity of your home, you'd, you would act on it? Absolutely. Now, that's step two. You have determined that where they're jumping from to where they're jumping to is something that's realistic for them. Now, there are some people that are looking in the market they can't afford. So what do you think your the, the motivation is going to be them leaving? So step three would be, Ask a simple question like, okay, and, you, and the audience will say, we already had the motivation conversation. What's your plan then from Sally? If you've got to sell first and you're seeing houses over there that are for sale and you can't act, that's like wanting to get into a football game or a concert and you're outside and there's no ticket. What, what's your plan to see the Beatles? So I was hoping you could help us with that because we don't know. Um, I mean, you're, you're the real estate agent, you're the expert on this. So that's why we're talking with you today to figure this out, to see what we can do in order to sell this house and then buy the, where we want to live. Now I'm going to give you my favorite question of all time and I haven't used it in over Here it comes. What Here it comes. It? What is it? What if you could have your cake and Prince eat it Sally, too? what if you could have your cake and eat it too? <laughs> what if you can have your cake and eat it too? <laughs> I mean, now, that would be great. How do we do that? Then you tell a story. The reason, see, too many people want to go in and they get impatient and they want to like solve a problem. I'm asking, I'm, I'm bringing the, her to me. And then she answered, well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's not, who doesn't want that, right? Okay, well, 
You said you see a house every couple of weeks or a month. And the only challenge, only challenge we have right now is you need your equity. So what if, don't tell them you can solve the problem. Pose the question okay. because you want them leaning towards you. What if we could find a buyer that would give you that 30 days, that would give you your number on your house, give you your equity and let you stay there for the 30 days. Now, I didn't say 30 days. Who did? She did. Mm -hmm. Now, they may start moonwalking. Well, I don't know if they'd be comfortable with that. Well, what would you be comfortable? How about 60 days? Okay, let's say there's a buyer out there that would let you stay there for 60 days. And then you'd have your equity. Now you can go when the next house hits that, that you guys like. You will be able to step in there as a cash buyer and make one move. Now, if that, if that was possible, remember, I'm not telling her it is. I'm giving her that one. I want her to stretch for it. Would that work for you? Yeah, it would. I think that because our, our offer would be so much stronger if it were cash. And well, we wouldn't have to worry about where we're going to live in the meantime. So the, the, then, awesome. Then what's the first thing we have to do then today? Put our property up on the market. Yes, and we'll put that specification in. And I could add another speech with her and she's the golden seller and we're looking for, you know, I, you guys, that's the steps. If, if that's isolated a problem, buyer or seller, find out where they're going. Are they realistic? Help, help them understand that what's their options? Well, well maybe, maybe I can get uh, uh, a contingent offer. Well, you're not going to go down that road. So once you have them in that cycle and once they're basically said, okay, knuckle bump, let's go ahead and get our home on the market. I don't want to dismiss the alternatives that Franceli brought up about, well, you know, maybe you talk to a mortgage broker lately. That's secondary to them committing to getting a home on the market. Now we have, I didn't take too much time on that. We can backfill, add, subtract, clarify whatever you Question. want. So you're just telling them or giving them the, the possibility that they that you'll be able to potentially maybe find a buyer that's going to allow them to stay for 60 days after the house is sold. Is are you only let me think about this? Are you only saying that so that you can get the house on the market? Because what if they're skeptical about the reality of you being able to find a buyer who's gonna allow them to stay there for two months? Well, Have let you me part of that happening. Have I personally? Yeah. No. So earlier this year, we sold a house for a client and they were given 18 months of free rent in the property. 18 months. Let that sink in. Was it a very desirable neighborhood? Very desirable neighborhood. Okay. Top dollar, highest price ever paid in that neighborhood for a house. So. And over list. The issue is what's the probability in this uh, inventory star market? There's a buyer that would basically match any particular seller's possession needs. Now you have the option to find, go after buyers that no one else can work. And advertise, hey, listen, I've got a golden buyer. What's that? That's somebody who will allow the seller to stay in there as long as they need, up to 12 months, up to six months, whatever. So, because they don't want to occupy anyway. And, and the reason I, I, I don't state it as a fact because I can't guarantee it. And secondly, I'm not trying to get them to list. That's not my goal. My goal is to help them get from to uh, my goal is to help them to get to where they want to go, and I'm giving them options that would work. I'm not looking for the listing. I just want the listing if that's they feel that's the best thing for them. I will help them get somewhere else. So, so great. if you receive an offer then for right. you know asking, but now they want to move in within 35 days, then what do you? Well, you present it. What would you do? You'd present it and say, well, th this is a good offer. However, it doesn't, how, how do you feel about the possession date? And if it doesn't work, you say, bye-bye. 
Hey, Denny, okay. Kristen yes. um, posted in the chat that to create a preferred seller sheet so that agents with buyers know what the expectation is. So Kristen, you want to elaborate on that? Because I think that's probably very timely that you would. Yeah, so here in Scottsdale, um, obviously I, I saw Archie was on the call too. Like it's very, very competitive market. We're still getting, you know, multiple, multiple offers on properties. And so we, we have this conversation about create a preferred seller sheet, meaning you actually put it in the, in the confidential section of the MLS and you tell them, the seller, the seller wants this title company. The seller wants, you just tell them exactly what the seller wants. The seller wants up to six months post, post closing to stay in the house or whatever the terms are. Because if you, it's kind of like this. I don't know why we just put something on the market and expect everybody to figure it out. Why don't we tell them what the minimum expectation is? Here's the minimum expectations of what the seller wants, wants to see. Now they can write an offer any way they want. But most likely someone has been beat out on 10 offers. They're going to give the seller what they want if they want that house. So put it in a preferred buyer, uh, seller sheet up front. So it's no, there's not, there's no guessing. Yeah, it, you can change the word of required seller. Here are the requirements for the seller to consider an offer. So that's awesome. And how many of you buyer's agents actually, if they don't have that, submit a contract and leave everything blank Maybe, how about this? I mean, obviously I've seen it with closing dates, no contingencies. Have you ever thought about putting one in with a everything blank, no purchase price on it? That's out of the box, isn't it? And you guys have, you guys have uh, uh, two hours to review and approve. Seller, you fill out your own contract, whatever you want. And we'll let you know if we can do it. Just saying. What other co conversation comments do we have in there, Sonny? Anyway. Uh, we've handled a lot of these objections. Whitney, are you back? Are you, are, I understand you were in town. Are you back home? Back in action. Good, because Kristen's on here. She's checking on you. <laughs> Hey, here I am. We got three minutes. So does anybody have any questions, uh, something you want to bring up or any ahas? Don't, don't hang up. And if you haven't gone to the YouTube station, uh, YouTube page, make sure you go and, and, and like, uh, subscribe to that when we get to 400. So <clears throat> floor is yours. Tickets to Greece when you get to 400. Well, tickets to Greece. That's right. Penny, I got one. I got another one for you. All right, Jess. I think prices are going to drop. I think we should wait for that before we before we buy. Okay, and where do you live? Other than that, is there any other reason why you wouldn't be uh, stepping into this market? Um, no. And are you, uh, do you own now or rent? Rent. All right, and how long have you been renting? Uh, for now, five years. Okay, and have you been thinking about buying for the last five years or just idea, the idea just popped into your head last night? Uh, I've been thinking for the last five years, but then I, I found somebody special and I kind of been putting things on hold just because I thought maybe it was going to go somewhere and I thought maybe we would buy the house together kind of thing. And um, this was an actual client, by the way. I got it. So let me ask you in the last five years, if, if, if you could go back and turn back the clock, would you have been better off to buy five years ago instead of today? I, I would think so, yes. You're better off buying <laughs> five days ago instead of today, right? So, right? so my question is, do you want to make that mistake again? Because five years ago, there were people thinking the market was going to, was going to go the other direction. How do you think they feel today? I think they're hating life. Well, do you want to own or do you want to hate life? I want to own. That's how I'd handle it. You got it. I mean, it's like a one minute conversation, right? Right. Okay. The, 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 you don't know what the future is going to be. So when people are afraid of what the future is going to be, you've got to take them to the past. And they'll, they'll say, oh, I've been looking at houses like for a year. What would you have been better off to buy a year ago? Why didn't you? Well, I was a little uncertain. What did that cost you? Right. Bring them back to the pain. Yes, what's pain the cost is of renting? Friend. Pardon me? What's, what's the true cost of renting? Oh my gosh, go ahead and say it. 
Wait, real quick. Kevin wants to know in this current role play, what was the isolation and the address? In which one? The one you just did. I I I I, I just skipped. I, I just skipped that. I didn't. No, I actually, didn't, you didn't skip it, Denny. You said I did ask the isolation. That, and he said, "No, that's the only reason." The only thing I didn't say is I understand. So the the addressing was I started to walk him back. How long you been looking? So that's that was me addressing it. Notice, notice, you guys, you you won't win if you start telling them about what the market's doing. I have a hard time not conflating um, isolate and address. Isolate is just other than that. You just other than that until they say no. There's that's it. Addressing, addressing is walking them through the questions so they self discover. Any Great aha, question. guys? Nice. Very nice, thank you. Kristen, away with. This is the longest time I've ever been on a call with Kristen that I've had to, I was able to talk more than her. So Kristen, would you like to say anything? Well, I think um, there's a couple of slides in Gary's um, vision speech that would be very helpful that everybody needs to become really, um, can, needs to understand at a high level so that when they're sitting there with a buyer who is afraid of making an offer, afraid, they're afraid to pay too much. They're they want to wait. They're not sure, et cetera. Actually, there's three slides. Um, one is the trend line because when you look at the trend line, that you cannot find a 10 year period anywhere in, anywhere in the last 50 year trend line where if you had bought a property during that 10 year period that you would have went backwards. You cannot find one. If you owned a house for at least 10 years, you look at that 10 the 50 year trend line. You you're it doesn't matter when you bought you're always better, if you're gonna own your house at least seven to 10 years, you, you're better to buy now versus later. The second slide would be the inflation shop slide. And here's why. It shows the cost of a car going up 30%. It shows the cost of uh, gas going up 56%. It shows the cost of a house going up 59%. But what do you think your payment did in the last, since 1989? It's down 24%. So, if you can show, also show them, like Jesse, you know, would it help if I could show you um, why inflation or why real estate is the best hedge against inflation? Would that help you understand why it might be better for you to buy now versus rent? Definitely. Okay, so Jesse, let me ask you a question. How much money do you make per year? Um, about 80 grand. <clears throat> 80 grand, awesome. So do you know what, the, do you know what inflation is today? Oh, no, I don't. It's about 8%. Do you know what that means to you and your salary, your, your hard-earned money? I'm probably making about 8% less. You're exactly right. Good answer. So let me ask you another question. Jesse, has your rent gone up in the last couple of years? Yes, it has. It has. How much has it gone up in the last couple of years, Jesse? Um, in the last couple of years, I'm not paying $400 a month more. Okay, so let me get this right. Your rent is $400 more per month, right? Right. That's roughly $5,000 a year. And, and we have inflation that now your $80,000 at the end of the year will be worth what? Um, actual buying power. Right. Um, so a lot less. Yeah, so um, those two things together are going to total up approximately what 11 10 11 twelve thousand dollars right now let's, let me ask you this if you had been owning a home the last couple of years or if you purchased a home today is your payment going to go up next year no is it going to go up in five years no no and that trend line that i just showed you showed that eventually no matter what the market is your house is going to go up in value and you're going to have the same payment that you had all along. So do you think it's better to lose $13,000 and do nothing or to go ahead and buy a home and have and buy the price, meaning have the price stay the same over the next 10 years? Which do you think would be better? I think I want to wait out those 10 years. Right. Just, yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just go ahead and, and get you into a home today? What does that sound like for you? Sounds like a smart move. Nice job. Quick. I love that. Thank you so much. It, it's, you know, 
Inflation is not your friend if you do not own a home. <coughs> so guys, I got a, a one parting thing I want to toss out here. If you would like to hear uh, Denny speak less than Kristen again, I, <laughs> I added in the chat window, you'll see a link to kristencolenetwork.com slash thrive sales, where Denny and Kristen will be doing a webinar specifically on how to get more listings in this market. It's coming up in exactly 20 days. Well, 19 days, 23 hours, 54 minutes and 27 seconds, according to the countdown clock that Kristen has on the website. That's awesome. Thanks for that plug. Thank you for being hey, on the call. Quick question. I'm yep. oh, sorry, Denny. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Kristen, what was your third slide? You said trend line, inflation, and then what was the third? The third one is um, <laughs> Yoon, um, Lawrence Yoon has a slide uh, showing that real estate over the last 50 years is the best hedge against inflation. And Whitney, be on the Friday KCN call because I'm going over yeah. all these slides. Perfect. Thank you. Ruby. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Bye. you, John. Sunny, any, anything else before we go? Nope. Have an awesome day. Be careful out there. For those of you still on the call, we only need four more subscribers to hit our goal. You have to go to Greece. Click on the link. You can do it. Four more. Thanks, Denny. That was great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank you again, uh, Denny. My pleasure. Good. Thank you for yeah, being did on. Did you subscribe? <laughs> So will this recording be on YouTube? It yes. will uh, be watching for it. It just takes us a few days. We're, we're, we're down a person right now that we're doing it. So it'll take us a couple of days. Just check back. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sonny. Thanks, Denny. Kevin, I did. I'm looking for it. So um, you, you can, uh, I'll, I'll find that message, Kevin. Yeah, I, I, I uh, did note it a couple of times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thanks, brother. I'll respond to that. Thanks, buddy. See ya. Bye, Chris. Bye, Sunny. Bye. Thank you.